there has been a wealth of documented artifacts found within very ancient sediment, coal seams, minerals, and even stones and geodes. All indicating that a vastly different story has taken place upon our Earth, to that of what the majority stubbornly persist in assuming. So many pieces of evidence, in fact, it seems that it has been an impossible task for an unknown group of tyrants who, for whatever reason, have attempted to conceal or suppress such discoveries, or more importantly, hide the historical tales in which they are all trying to tell us. And these next three are no exception. The Lanzhou Stone, discovered in 1999 by Zhilin Wang in a remote mountainous area in northwest China. Upon research being undertaken, it was established to be unexplainable. The rock is made of an unknown material, and the metal artifact embedded within may quite possibly have alien origins. As reported in the Lanzhou Morning News, on June 26, 2002. More than 10 geologists, physicists, and other specialists from such institutes as the National Land Resources Bureau of China, the Institute of Geology and Minerals Research, and the School of Resources and Environment all eventually studied the possible origins of the stone. The results of these examinations, the possible explanations for its formation or indeed origin, were never released. Amazingly, however, the scientists unanimously concluded that the stone is currently one of the most valuable in China, or possibly the world. When pressed for further explanation, it was disclosed that the rock will apparently be extremely important for future research and, quote, archaeological studies. Any further disclosure regarding the scientists' discoveries has remained elusive. The Wolfseg iron has a similarly suppressed story, over 20 million years old, this extremely ancient and clearly once worked cube of iron may also have come from space. Indeed, that is a conclusion many educated researchers arrived at. Although attempts to discredit such claims involve recent testing, which has shown the cube lacks usual elements present in meteoric material, they all avoid mentioning its strong magnetic characteristics, a signature uncannily similar to that found in meteorites and other objects with an otherworldly origin. It was discovered when a workman at the Braun Iron Foundry in Schoendorf, Austria, was breaking up a block of lignite that had been mined at Wolfsegg. In 1886, mining engineer Adolf Gurlt reported the object to the Natural History Society of Bonn, who noted that the object was coated with a thin layer of rust, was made of iron, and had a specific gravity of 7.75. Early descriptions of the object appeared in contemporary editions of the scientific journals Nature and L'Astronomie, identified at the time by numerous scientists as being a fossil meteorite. Now virtually unanimously concluded to have been man-made, it has thus been unexplainable. Stolen at one point, it was strangely returned to another museum, now without a compelling mainstream explanation it has simply been condemned to the history books as some form of elaborate hoax. Impossible artifacts have been found in the most unusual of places. For example, a seemingly unbreakable piece of unknown metal, possibly a ring of ancient, or according to man's official history, alien origin found within a geode encapsulated for over 200 million years. Most people begin with good intentions, but sadly, are often allured away by various means of temptation, subsequently allowing such relics to disappear into the archives of the past. This report and the accompanying image, it seems, is all that we will ever see regarding this compelling artifact. A mysterious fate experienced by many such artifacts. For example, sadly, only the Wolfseg iron now remains in the public domain for future testing. What secret within our past is felt by some clearly powerful people as an imperative to keep concealed from the majority of the world? Maybe the question should be, will we ever be ready or indeed able to find out? We've often put forward the premise that within our very distant past, a cataclysm occurred, or more precisely, a great flood. Many surviving ancient sites around the world bear the scars of this event. 
the Great Pyramids of Giza, for example, still held chambers flooded with ancient seawater deep within their bowels until very recently. Much of this evidence slowly removed over the past few decades. And our next ancient structure is no different. Known as Adams Bridge, it is an astonishing feature which stretches 30 kilometers, connecting southern India with Sri Lanka, believed to date from a pre-Diluvian age, some 1.7 million years ago. Several individuals who have taken the time to explore this ancient ruin have concluded that it is indeed artificial. However, with a dating of over 1.5 million years, it is clearly a site that academia will continue to reject as actually being man-made, regardless of the mounting data in favor of such a reality. It seems that regardless of the overwhelming evidence that the mountain of unexplained accomplishments by our quote, primitive ancestors, modern scholars of many subjects continue an existence in complete denial of these truths. Dr. Bajra Narayanan, former director of the Geological Survey within India, performed an in-depth analysis of the suspected bridge's makeup. His research concluded that the Adams Bridge was indeed an artificial man-made structure, one which stretches far back into the unknown history of our planet. Below the surface, they found organized layers of sandstone blocks, coral boulders, and other cement-like substances. Several divers investigated the length of the bridge and concluded that its entire layout was indeed of an organized and thus artificial nature. The survey also revealed extremely ancient evidence of intense quarrying was also left within the surrounding area, these materials matching those placed carefully within the causeway itself. Interestingly, ancient Hindu legend from the area agrees that this enormous feature is indeed a now-submerged, gigantic earthwork, stating that it was built for the god Rama in order to help him cross the land to the large island, to rescue his beloved from a demon. Is Adam's Bridge really a huge pre-Diluvian sunken artifact? a 30-kilometer man-made bridge which once connected the two countries? It's an amazing proposition, and the more we learn about the amazing history which was lost here on our planet, the more it seems like a real possibility. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care. Peru is undoubtedly a jewel in the crown of ancient sites that can be found all throughout the world. Not only does it contain some of the most astonishing as yet unexplained polygonal masonry to be found anywhere, but it also contains many other anomalous, advanced features built with such precision and prowess they are still utilized by modern-day man. Irrigation systems still flow with fresh water as if they were built yesterday, still providing water to the local residents who reside in these mountainous areas. Agricultural technologies, utilized by our more modern ancestors, the Incas, undoubtedly aiding in the flourishing of their culture. It is a place that possesses such advanced features, academia can merely resign themselves to a limited close explanation of such wonders, as merely identified as pre-Incan. This without any explanation as to how these ancient groups who predate those who they have studied in depth, were aware of such advanced, elegant solutions to farming, water sourcing, building, and many other miraculous techniques for survival, among these notoriously inaccessible cliffs throughout the Inca Trail. However, deep within the Andes, far away from the well-worn tourist routes, is possibly one of the most perplexing ancient ruins of them all. Known as Napahuaca, it is a rock-cut ruin that is seemingly placed alone in a place of no initially obvious significance, no indication that it was linked to any existing pre-Incan ruin, yet the precision and indeed obvious effort that went into the creation of this anomalous artifact is undeniable. Carved into the mountainside, strongly reminiscent of false doors, features that can be found among many ancient ruins around the world that, according to numerous ancient legends, were used by spirits to enter and exit the realm of the living. It is intricately designed, features smooth, seemingly laser-cut surfaces, which in regard to its dating is nothing short of astonishing. Found at an altitude of nearly 3,000 feet above sea level, it contains many baffling features which may indicate why this seemingly inconspicuous location was selected. The ceiling and floor of the cave entrance, for instance, 
not only appear as if it was hewn with laser-like precision, but were also carved at two precise separate angles, one of 60 degrees and another of 52 degrees. These angles, intriguingly, are also found within the Great Pyramids of Giza at numerous locations. Furthermore, whoever constructed this possible false door somehow picked the only spot upon the mountain that contained traces of a mysterious blue stone. This blue stone, only found within this specific spot, has for many years been utilized within modern technology for its unique characteristic for its piezoelectric properties, a type of crystal capable of generating an electrical charge, used by radio manufacturers for many decades within receivers. The rock chosen for the specific location of the carving is also, intriguingly, magnetic in nature. What's more, if one travels exactly halfway around the world to the UK, the false door aligns perfectly with Stonehenge. Why was this false door created? How was it created with such precision? What tools were utilized by ancient man to achieve these feats of ancient engineering? Why was it placed at this specific location, a place that has been discovered to contain mysterious blue crystals with unique electrical properties? Is this false door, like many alternative researchers have postulated, a portal of some kind? Allowing the teleportation of an ancient advanced civilization? We find the location, the precision involved, and indeed, the other intriguing characteristics surrounding this mysterious anomaly, highly compelling. Ancient Uparts are undoubtedly one of the most interesting subjects in regard to lost antiquities. Many of these artifacts, due to the locations in which they are found within, or the immense age displayed within the erosion seen upon the object, makes them one of the most controversial areas of study. How can one answer the question of how an iron pot is found within a solid lump of coal within a seam over 300 million years in age? Or how the clear imprint of a chariot wheel is found fossilized deep within a mine in Russia? These artifacts, found at hundreds of feet deep in sediment, or displaying a wooden handle petrified into coal, display an undeniably immense age, and as such, are solid pieces of evidence to support our posit of there having been a series of now lost civilizations stretching far into the past. Nature is infamous in being cyclical. Why then would we not be permitted by mainstream academia to presume this be the case for the climates of the Earth as well? Regardless of this digression, however, the subject of tonight's video is an incredible artifact which we believe to be that of an ancient upart. However, due to its incredible characteristic, is being masqueraded as that of a much later creation by a far more recent ancestor. Known as the Sword of Gujan, this intriguing artifact has somehow resisted the effects of time, and although it is enormously old, is seemingly as sharp and as shiny today as the day it was made. This remarkable characteristic, although unexplained, is not the only interesting thing about the sword. It also features an incredibly old form of writing. Eight characters are written in an ancient script, now known as bird-worm seal script, literally birds and worms characters. Owing to the intricate decorations of the defining strokes, it is very old and is attested to be a variant of seal script. In 1965, while an archaeological survey was being performed, along the second main aqueduct of the Zhang River Reservoir in Jingzhou, Ubei, a series of ancient tombs were discovered. A dig started in the middle of October 1965, ending in January 1966, eventually revealing more than 50 ancient tombs. More than 2,000 artifacts were recovered from the sites, including the sword, having been found inside a casket together with a human skeleton. The casket was discovered in the December of 1965 at the Wangshan site number 1, 7 kilometers from the ruins of Ying, currently called Jinishang, once the ancient capital of Chu. The sword was found sheathed in a wooden scabbard, finished in black lacquer. 
the scabbard had an almost airtight fit with the sword body. Unsheathing the sword revealed an untarnished blade, despite the tomb being soaked in underground water for over 2,000 years. How did this sword retain its incredible condition? Why does it seem as if it is resistant to aging? What sort of metallurgy did the swordsmith once use to create such an amazing object? It is clearly an ancient upart, and one we postulate has an origin now hidden within the bowels of history. It is a remarkable thing, and as such, is highly compelling.